Good morning, everybody. That big house and garage we're doing again today. We've been doing a lot of these this year. About 2,000 square feet in the house. 800 in the garage. It's a pretty typical house here in Maine. Eight foot foundation, so these guys are gonna have a big basement. Just getting ready to go. First truck just showed up, got around 35 yards. Dangle pumping is gonna make this pretty easy, so we'll get it in, we'll get it in fairly fast. This garage has a center drain. A lot of garages we do, we just slope them right out the front, a couple inches. Either way, doesn't really matter to us. That truck, he's got 10 on, we got three 10s coming and then a five for balance, so he's mixing up to about a six and a half. We got 3,500. We got a uh, kind of a blend today with three eight stone and three quarter fiber mesh. And the mid-range water reducer, so we could pour, you know, up to a seven or an eight pretty easily if we want to. So here we go. He's gonna prime out right now. Yeah, let him prime out, then we'll give it a little bit. Okay. Go ahead. At least about ten or so. Yeah. Yeah, I think this way, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. That's why I started over there. We're going backwards. Hey guys, let me know down in the comments if you have basement foundations like this in your area. Eight foot concrete walls, you know, big basements. This is pretty typical for Maine where we have a lot of freeze and thaw and we have winter for about three months. So if you do, let me know what city and state you're from. And then if you don't, if you don't live in an area where you have any foundations like this at all, let us know. Um, and again, leave your city and your state where you're from. And that'd be pretty cool to find out from everybody. You know, we're pouring concrete floors inside these basements just about every single day up here. Occasionally we'll do houses on a slab, but probably... Probably 80% of the building construction, residential building construction in Maine is just like this. And it's definitely a lot easier when they do backfill the outside. This one, they didn't backfill the outside, so it made it even a little more difficult. But anyway, let me know down in the comments, yes or no, and where are you from? Yeah, first start down, 10 yards. This thing figures around 25 down here. Using the Street Demon today, battery powered. Vibrating, vibrating street. That makes streeting pretty darn easy. It also makes bow floating easy. Look how easy that is to bow float. Down and back. Perfect. You can tell when it's perfectly flat like that, that there's no dips or humps in there. One little thing I like doing when I'm both floating is when I pull it back, I like to overlap my line just about an inch or two. That way I'm not running the bull float in the exact same spot and it makes that line a lot less deeper. Go down, I'll push it to the right just a little bit, overlap that line. We like to keep about an inch high behind the behind the rod and then just keep it tuned into that we don't like it getting any lower or any higher really that's perfect that way the edge stays right down flat you get it higher than that and then it's going to want to ride up on it if you get it lower than that you're going to have these dips in there feels like butter creamy butter
10 yards will do about 800 square feet at four inches thick. You figure the pump, pump takes about a yard, so we got nine yards down there. So, you know, we got about 700, 720 square feet right there in the floor, done in about 15, 20 minutes. So not, that's not too bad production, just, that's pretty good taste. See how them guys are keeping that right tuned in. Then all the screed guy has to do is just watch his ends. Consistent motion backwards. You don't want to stop and start. So that's key to, to making those floors nice and flat. I like staying with the bow float when I go up against a wall. I do like staying three or four inches away from the wall when I pull that back. Because that when you pull it back and tip it, it leaves a little divot there. If it's right up against the wall, then you got to fill that by hand when you come down to finish. But if you leave it out a little bit, then the power trowel will fill it. Just makes finishing a lot easier if that edge gets hard in the sun. I try not to leave a divot, but there's always a tiny one. See that right there? There's barely a divot there, but there is a little one. So that's out far enough now where when they run the trowel up against the wall, the trowel will fill that right in. One of the one of the keys to not getting that, you know, when they're dumping that out like that and tuning it in is not getting it too high or too low is, is me coming right behind them shooting a pad so they know what they're going by. That means they're going to give it a little drink. Bang down. So when we pump like this, we like to dump a complete truck out, whether it's 8 yards, 9 yards, 10 yards, or whatever it is. We like to dump it right out, and that gives us plenty of concrete to work with as far as screeding and bull floating, because we can get it down pretty fast. And one of the keys is me doing these pads right as they're dumping it out, so we know that we're not too high, not too low. That just helps move things along a little bit faster, and that's just how we like to do it. Then once we have the truck dumped out and the pads all set to grade using the laser level, then the guys will just screed our, our wet pads in the concrete like this. And that gives us something in the middle of the floor to go by when we use the screed demon and get it vibrated, screeded. So it's just, it's a quick way of doing it as far as we're concerned. We don't typically drive pins in and put nails through the pins for our pads because in number one, we need quite a few of them, and if somebody kicks one and, and knocks it off, then we got to go get the laser and set it up to reset the pin. And we never know like exactly where we want these pads, so it's just easier to wet set them with a the laser the way we do it. And then, as you can see, once we get them all set, it, it takes really not hardly any time at all to use the vibrating screed and get everything down and flat. So, you know, a truck takes, like I said in the first one, about 15 minutes per truck to get everything done like this with three or four guys. And that's that's pretty quick as far as we're concerned. That's the pace we like to work at. Give me enough to get a pad right there, Scott, and I can get rid of that laser. Hard stretch, yep. You got enough to turn? Eric, Eric said he wanted to finish that bay out. You don't run things that vibrate? Nope. I avoid them. Eric didn't get his edge magged over there. Jeez. Hey, you had two jobs. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm doing one of them. Mag and bolster. 
That's why you got mad. How do you like that big one? Uh, this thing? <laughs> uh, I've handled that. Like that's a couple of them. Got your name on it. I know. I'll fix it. There won't be any. There won't be any holes have, in this. I don't feel like no holes in this bay. I don't feel like retrain. Oh, the only holes. <laughs> You give that 10 already? No. no. Give 10 more? Yeah, I could use 10. Okay. 10 or 12. I thought I was a little kind of like the dry side. Yeah. It's alright. All right, so Darren's finishing up in that bulkhead there in the basement. Luke and I are going to start dumping out the garage. And remember, we got 3,500 PSI, so we got pretty strong concrete here. And we got fiber mesh in this for reinforcement with a high strength, with a mid-range water reducer, excuse me. So we got the concrete in here is going to be really strong. And the floor is all locked in by the concrete walls. So as long as the sub base is prepared right, the fiber mesh for reinforcement is plenty strong enough for this floor because this the concrete floor can't go anywhere it's locked in by all the walls and if like i said if the guy who put the the dirt in compacted it really well it's not going to settle it's not going to heave so the floor is not going to go anywhere um and this one's got a center drain in it so we're going to slope the floor all slopes to that center drain so as we screed the floor we're screeding the slope into it all to that center drain and we'll get this all dumped out. The concrete was actually a little bit stiffer or drier here in the garage than we pour in the basement because of the slope we got going to the center drain. So, I mean, I don't know, it was probably about a five. And it screeds, it still screeds down okay though. We call, you know, the way we screed, we call it kick screeding, so we kind of just Two guys will grab onto a 14 foot screed like this and we'll kind of kick our footprints in as we're moving backwards so we don't have to stop. We'll just keep screeding down. We call this a bay, you know, a 14 foot section by whatever that is, 14 feet. So we kind of had four bay, different bays in this garage, four different sections. And that's the garage floor right there, all sloped to, I think it was around 28, 28, 28, 26, something like that for this garage. And then we just get it bow floated, and that's it. Yeah, 844, do that, started at 7. 35 yards, I don't know, we should probably got a little bit left on, but that's uh, better than running out. The house and garage, oh, 2,000 square feet in the house, 800 in the garage. Not too bad for time. Now we're just gonna hang out power trial. Probably done power trial in the day by power trial and saw it out of here by about one o'clock. That edge over there in the sun, that's gonna go really fast. It'll be this edge here in the shade we'll be hanging out kind of waiting for, but the garage is gonna go really fast, so it won't be here very long trialing. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you on the next one.